My name is Mark Bernard. I'm a monetary economist. In this video, I want to talk about specifically why the Russian economy is over. It's hollowed out. The main reason why is the Russians don't have it in them. They just cannot do it. Let me explain what that means. But first, we're going to discuss the Russian economy by some numbers and statistics. Again, not aggregate numbers, because I don't trust the Russian data. We're going to take a look at simple data coming out of Russia, but really from my own personal experience. All right, to breathe some levity into this a very serious subject, I may know something about economics. I know something about Eastern Europe. I'm in Eastern Europe right now. I'm living in Eastern Europe. I've been told very directly, I know nothing about women, but I know something about potatoes. My main source of income in the United States is I'm a potato grower, licensed in St. John's County, the potato capital of Florida. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, Dioscoria alata, certain cultivars. I know potatoes. Here in Eastern Europe, what am I doing? I'm growing potatoes. I have a field with potatoes growing in it. I know potatoes inside and out. And anybody who wants to test me on this, they can ask in the comments. I try to read every comment, don't always get to it, but you can ask me. The reason I'm talking about potatoes is, according to the UN data, currently 20% of the Russian diet is potato-based. What can you make with potatoes? You can make fries, fritki. You can make potato pancakes. You can make mashed potatoes. You can boil the potatoes. You can do basically everything. Potatoes is basically not only a complementary good, but it's also considered maybe an inferior good in the sense that when you have less money, you spend and purchase more of it, okay? That goes counterintuitive to the basic laws of supply and demand. Why is that relevant? Because most people live in the countryside in Russia. Don't buy it that they're living in Pan Am and Moscow and all the young people there are doing great. Nothing come out of Russia in terms of economic data is correct. Most people live in a countryside with disposable income, according to Numbrio, of 500 and something dollars a month. You spend a couple hundred dollars, let's say three, 400 on your flat, 100 for media or utilities. You're left with under $100 for food. You know disproportionately if potatoes are an inferior good, it's going to be spent on potatoes. What has happened in the potato market in Russia? High inflation in the potatoes, disproportional in inflation. Two reasons. One, horrible crop 2023. They were too focused on the geopolitical struggle to grow potatoes. Two, Egypt is curtailing their exports to Russia, as are other countries, for obvious reasons. The Russians are claiming they can compensate for it, but I'm going to tell you why they can't. Remember, they're in USDA growing zone four and five mostly. Maybe have a little bit of 6A somewhere. But let's say four and five. That's like, that's like northern Montana, North Dakota. You have a very short growing season. And in this video, we're going to talk about the case study of being a homesteader all the time, every time when there's an economic depression or an economic collapse or an economic crisis. It's an allocation problem, not a production problem. Yes, there's going to be malnutrition if there's, and it already is, and, and even starvation in Russia. You can define it by certain parameters. One parameter I really like to look at because I want to make the world a better place is head circumference of children between the ages of zero and two. If that's declining, there's malnutrition. It's such a good indicator because if that is lagging head circumference, by the age of two, you're going to have developmental problems your whole life. You can't compensate for that. Sometimes grown-ups have big head circumferences for other reasons, and it doesn't correlate with intelligence and potential. But if you look at the data of head circumference, and it's decreasing, like I suspect it is in Russia, because they're channeling all their productive energies into this geopolitical conflict in Ukraine, I think you're going to see some data coming out that's telling malnutrition is prevalent. But let's take it from a homesteader standpoint. In a crisis situation, you know, I, and Americans, when they first came to the colonies, 
They hacked on wooden ships and iron men. They hacked away out of the wilderness and buried their dead along the way. You've got to be full of mm, and vinegar to be able to uh, feed yourself. Okay? You can't have this. Maybe that two generations ago the Russians could do it, but they don't have it in them now. They're very passive. They're like, well, you know, I'd rather be served as meat on the front lines for the Dark Lord to get some money, and that which they won't get, by the way, than grow food for themselves. Let me tell you, as a case study, what it takes to grow food. Okay, let's use... Let's use potatoes as the, let's say, default or proxy of basically what it takes. It takes calories. You can't be having a garden in the village and, you know, oh, we're safe, we have the village. No, that will provide a few months of green leaves. You need calories. Two th let's, say, let's say it's 2,000 uh, calories a, or kilocalories per person per day. In cold regions like Russia, you know, it could be like 10 below and the wind is blowing. The snow is going horizontal. You'll probably need more. But let's say that's the base. And if you grew only potatoes, which is a pretty high yield per acre crop, it's one of the highest. It's the most consumed vegetable. You're going to need 5.71, 5, 5 5.72 pounds per person over a family of four. That's 23 pounds. If you extrapolate that through the whole year, how many pounds? That's 8,351 pounds of potatoes you have to grow. You can grow it conventionally. You need 0.6 acres if you really know what you're doing. And we'll get into that in a moment. Organically is better, 0.7. Conventional, you just throw on NPK. Okay, it's mostly N, N creates the green, P creates the roots, but a K, potassium, is really what makes the tubers big. But you do that for one or two seasons, you're going to be deplete the micronutrients. Like I have mentioned, iodine, which is essential for pre preconception and zero to three month fetal development in terms of intelligence and IQ, very highly correlated. You can check Google Scholar. So what are we talking about here? Do you think the average millennial Russian with their, with her lame attitude has it in them? To, to basically grow 0.7 acres of potatoes. I know I can because I do it for my family. And, you know, in Europe we do it, here in Poland, and in Ukraine they do it. But you got to really know what you're doing. you gotta, you got to trade potatoes with your neighbors. First, you got to have the land. Most people don't have the land. They have uh, some crumbling block of flats. you got to get different varieties of potatoes. So it's not the same potatoes every year. Maybe you rent or, or you know, barter something with a combine or tractor. <coughs> a chungnik. You can do it with hand tools, but you got to be willing to get your hands dirty, really get in there. I can't see millennial Russians. They're so lame in the respect of their collective unconsciousness. Their parents, maybe. Their grandparents, probably, yes. And their great-grandparents, now Pevno, for sure, they could have done it. But the current generation has been so propagandized and lulled into passivity to be passive and to just expect the government to take care of. What's going to happen is there's going to be an economic crisis of you can't even imagine a tsunami in Russia. And people are going to be like in Venezuela hunting rats. You're not, they're not going to be able to grow food for themselves. They don't have the idea. They don't have the, the you know to just get in there and get their hands dirty. They wouldn't even know how to grow an acre of potatoes. I can do it. A lot of hipsters off the grid, I'm quasi off the grid, can do it. Russians, it's going to be mass starvation. And I'm going to define starvation and malnutrition again as the head circumference of children zero to two years old. Because I want to quantify it. It's very hard to quantify this data because everything coming out of Russia is untrue in terms of data. It's all distorted. They're claiming they're going to have the biggest yield of potatoes this year, 2024. It's not true. Remember, Russia, again, is growing zone four or five. Very short growing season. I'm in a, a growing zone 9B in Florida. They just changed the USDA. I have two growing seasons. I basically grow tubers all year round. Various types. Again, the Russians don't have it in them. They're going to lose this geopolitical conflict because it's going to collapse from within. Mass starvation and the effect will echo through generations 
of undeveloped people with underdeveloped potential because of malnutrition. Don't think of malnutrition as people just not having enough. You know, there's a lot of people who are pretty big and they're malnourished. It's these micronutrients and nutrients, particularly in fetal development and the first two year years of development where IQ is changing. IQ doesn't change much after two or four. Maybe a little bit here and there. So with this case study of potatoes, I'm telling you right now, you need for a family of four, 8,351 pounds of potatoes. And even if you're saying, well, you can substitute that for rye or wheat, uh, you know, which have lower yields per acre, mind you. Or you can get bread. It's all this white milled bread, low nutrition bread. It'll fill you up, but it's not going to do it in terms of nutrition. Then you have to obviously supplement with meat and, and eggs and other things. So the vast majority of Russians are totally up the creek without a paddle. They can't do it, and they don't have it in them. And, and, and not, as a, not as anything to do with genetics, because a generation ago they could, but as a collective unconsciousness of the Russians, now they're weak, and they're going to lose the geopolitical conflict because of that. The Russian economy is going to collapse. Look at me. I'm an economist, particularly focusing on microeconomics of individual households living in Eastern Europe, studying with academic research, serious academic research in the States. Look at Constantine inside Russia. He's predicting the same thing. He's an economist. Believe it from us. Don't believe it from these people who are just sitting in, you know, ivory towers and uh, smoking uh, cigars with Port Brandy, congratulating themselves on being masters of the universe, working at some foundation. They're not economists. I am. I'm here. I'm on the ground. Okay? I'm on the front lines of a potato growing. Just look behind me. I don't know if you can see the chung, chungnik, the tractors, growing there, humming. Russian economy is over because they're allocating all their resources to non productive means. No matter what you say, you can ha not have this misallocation. And the beginnings are like endings. I'm going to end it with shortages are always an allocation problem, not a production problem. You meditate on that and you understand why the Russian economy is up the creek without a paddle. They're being hollowed out and they're, they're poised to lose. And it's the Russian people's attitude that is at fault. And it's hard times ahead. It's the Titanic sinking ahead for them. My name is Mark Birnott. I'm a monetary economist. Have a great day. Thank you very much.